As promised, at the top of this broadcast, we would take you back to Bowling Green, Ohio, when Mitt Romney took to the stage, and there he is. Let's listen in. What would happen if the president's tax policies actually were enacted? Because his tax policy is to take the tax on small business from 35% to 40%. I say that because most small businesses are taxed as individuals. And he wants to raise the marginal tax rate from 35 to 40 percent. And the NFIB came back with a number. They said if that policy gets put in place, it will kill 710,000 jobs. That's the direction of this president. And there's something else, I think, that you ought to know. And that is when it, something's in trouble, when people need good jobs, you would think the president would focus all of his energy and his passion on helping people get jobs. But you know what he's been doing over the last six months? Yeah. In the last six months, he has held 100 fundraisers. And guess how many meetings he's have, had with his jobs council? None. Zero. Zero in the last six months. So it makes it very clear where his priorities are. His priority is not creating jobs for you. His priority is trying to keep his own job, and that's why he's going to lose it. He is simply out of touch with what's happening in this country. And he's out of ideas. He's offered no new ideas to get the economy going other than to send out another bailout to states. Do you want another bailout, Governor? No, no. The Republican governors aren't looking for another bailout. He's out of, he's out of touch. He's out of ideas. He's out of excuses. And that's why in November we've got to get him out of office. Now, now, on Friday, he said something which the governor alluded to, which really reveals what he thinks about our country, about, about our people, about free enterprise, about freedom, about individual initiative, about America. And you've, you've heard it already, and I've seen some signs that it referenced it. I just want to say it exactly as he said it. Speaking about small business and businesses of all kind, he said this, if you've got a business you didn't build that. Somebody else made that happen. How many people here, would the people who began a business or are leading a business in this room please stand up? Wow, thank you. Thank you. Let me, don't sit down. Stand up, stand up. Keep standing up. Keep standing Mitt up. Mitt Romney Let in Bowling Green, Ohio, of course, he's going to be hammering home that message uh, until the November right. election coming up very soon. And it's going to get harder and harder, these messages. Uh, he is, again, in Bowling Green, Ohio, where it's uh, no green on the ground, according to our meteorologist, Ted Myers, because as we have reported here on CNN, a huge drought is affecting more than half of the country with disaster declarations in 26 states. And I want to go now to Chad Myers for more on which states are taking the biggest hits. Mm -hmm. You're the one that said, yeah, he's in Bowling Green, but no green on the ground. Yeah, he's getting a bird's eye view as he flew in and then driving around. He is seeing the devastation in Ohio from Indiana to back to Illinois. All the states mm -hmm. that really are the breadbasket, the places that make the food that we eat. The and literal that we bread basket, export, yeah. literally, yeah. So let's get to it. Let's go state by state and we'll break it down for you. What has happened here is that we had an amazing planting season. We have great corn prices because ethanol has raised the prices of corn because they use the ethanol to use the corn to make the ethanol and then we put it in our, our tanks so that's great but so many farmers planted corn this year trying to cash in on that money and so we have corn planted where maybe it shouldn't be planted maybe you should have planted beans beans a lot more drought resistant starting in may a drought started right through here it literally stopped raining we didn't have a severe weather season in may or june across most of the u.s that's the area that was hit very hard by the lack of rain indiana has planted 12.2 million acres of corn this year. 71% is poor or worse. Wow. Illinois, 22, almost 23 million acres of corn. 56 is poor or worse. Kansas, half of it poor or worse, which means you're going to make 
10, 20, maybe 30 percent of what you could have. In some places, you're just going to have to plow it under or make it into silage. Iowa, 27 percent poor, but that's the biggest state at 24 million acres. Nebraska, where I grew up there, 27 percent, 19 million acres planted. And that's not the only thing. We talk a lot about how cows eat corn, but you know what? Cows eat hay. Cows eat grass for the first couple of years of their life. You just can't start feeding them corn when they grow, when, they, when they're born. They need hay. They need pasture. Missouri, 92% of your pasture is in poor or very poor condition. Indiana, it, there is no hay. There's no grass for these animals to eat. You're going to have to ship it in, bring it in from someplace else. And all the other towns and all the other states that I see, Don, they're not making hay either. So uh, you always say make hay while the sun shines. While the sun, well, the sun has shone, shined too much this year. We needed some rain, and it's going to take a lot to make this come back, and I don't think we're going to see it. You stole my line. I say that to people, and they go, what did you, what did you say? Make hay while the sun shines. <laughs> yeah. You are depressing a lot of people, though. I'm but sorry. But that's the reality. I, it is it, right? the reality, yeah. and we're going to live with this all the way through the end of the season. That's September, October, hoping for some rain, but I just don't think even rain right now is going to help a lot of those crops where Rob Marciano was today. Yeah. We've had a lot here in the Georgia area. A lot, but those folks aren't getting any. Thank you very much. We'll check back with you next hour, Chad. Appreciate it. One woman is taking on the Boy Scouts of America. She is a former Cub Scout Den leader, and she claims she was dismissed because she is gay. She just delivered petitions with 300,000 signatures to the national headquarters. I'll talk with her next.